Morning, gentlemen. Sexism is just uh, another word these females use to claim victimhood. In fact, separating a gender from a person's character is impossible. How we interact with someone is based on many small details that add up to our method of communication. We wouldn't speak to a police officer the same way we talk to our buddies. The way we talk to a child is different than when we speak to a professor. How we interact with men is not the same as how we interact with women. And these are learned traits that help us navigate society. Women just want to be treated equal. But when they do, they still find room for drama. Let's check this article out. It's from Medical News Today. And it says, Can Rudeness Hide Sexism? By Catherine Lane. In order to address sexism, people must first recognize it. In a new study that appears in Psychological Science, researchers from the University of Virginia in Texas have revealed that by being equally rude to men and women, some men can hide sexist attitudes. The authors of the study refer to this as the equal opportunity jerk defense. <laughs> well, these geniuses have figured out that some men are rude to everybody in order to hide their sexist views. They even have a new name for it. But I never thought of using jerk in that way when you're talking about science. Um, these researchers must be women. The authors of the recent study define sexism as attitudes, beliefs, or behaviors that reflect, foster, or promote negative stereotypes about women. Study co-author Dr. Sora is an assistant professor of management at the Jindal School of Management. <laughs> so they define sexism as negative stereotypes about women. This is another moral crime that is exclusive to women. Men can't be victims of sexism because they're men. Our findings suggest that when rudeness towards men hides sexist behavior, this hurts women in more than one way. First, women have to manage the sexism they face. Second, they may, ha they may begin to have doubts about whether sexism is actually present, which can only can also be psychologically taxing. And third, even when they come to the conclusion that sexism was present, they may have a difficult time convincing others that sexism was at play. Man, so I'm, I'm so glad I don't give a shit what people say. If someone is rude to a woman, she has to first decide if it was sexist or if it was just rude. Then if she decides it was sexist, then she has to convince everyone else that it wasn't just them being rude. I mean, hell, I'm psychologically taxed just thinking about it. If a man is identified as rude to all, it can lead to a perception that microaggressions are less relevant to be addressed because they are rude to everybody. And specific microaggressions are minimal in comparison. The study had several parts. In the first, Researchers asked 1,100 employed men to self-report their rudeness towards male and female colleagues, as well as their attitudes and beliefs about women. Men who had sexist beliefs about women were also more likely to be rude to men. So they're trying to say that sexist men are rude to everybody. The second part of the study tested how observers judge others. Did people regard a man who was rude to men and women as less sexist than a man who was rude only to women? First, the researchers asked the participants to read tweets by Donald Trump. Oh, shit. They showed the participants two types of Trump tweets about women, which they followed with a with varying number of tweets aimed at men. All the tweets were denigrating women or man in question. Those who only saw the tweets about women judged Donald Trump to be sexist. However, the more tweets about men the participants saw after the tweets about women, the more likely they were to judge him as being gender blind. 
This is exactly why you have to do research before you make assumptions and call people sexist, especially when it comes to somebody like Trump. I mean, calling him a sexist is like calling a zebra black. The final part of the study required participants to judge fictitious scenarios in which managers were rude to both male and female subordinates. They then had to state whether those managers should have a have gender bias training. The more evidence observers saw of managers' rudeness to men, the less likely they were to judge that they needed to train it. Well, these wokists and their philosophies are mind-numbing. They look for the smallest hint of characteristic that they don't approve of so they can label you and then send you to be pre reprogrammed. And they wonder why so many men are walking away. I mean, we're scared to, we're scared to be doxxed for making a joke or, heaven forbid, defending ourselves. I feel that in the workplace, rudeness can be used to hide sexism. And it has the potential to derail attempts to create an equitable workplace. In my experience, men who are perceived as universally rude are seen as having skill deficiencies and guided towards training around communication and teamwork, rather than considering that biases can underlie their behaviors. What a hypocrite. The, the author is stating their own bias and wants to send someone to training because of their bias. I mean, you can't make this shit up. People, these people are lost in a fog of education. I mean, they're so smart that they're dumb. I mean, I could see where a man who's had his life destroyed because of one of these females being rude to everyone. I mean, he's pissed. He put all he had into his family and all that is gone now. The idea that he's also sexist would be par for the course. I mean, I'm not rude to everyone, but I'm magtile for a reason. No amount of training is going to change what she did to me, and no amount of animosity is going to heal me. I get up in the mornings and worry about me and mine. Someone being rude to me is low on my radar. If these females want to be equal, then they should grow a pair. Stop being so sensitive. But it's just my opinion. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll talk to you soon.